Okay, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Missouri students sponsored by the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thanks for joining us. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your, to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at moacac.org. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website. Again, that's moacac.org. Thank you, and now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Tim Joy, and I am here representing the University of Pittsburgh. I am thrilled that there are so many of you here this evening to uh, both express your interest in Pitt and to learn a little bit more. I myself am a graduate of the university. I graduated in the spring of 2017 from Pitt School of Education, and I was so inspired by the time that I spent at Pitt as a student that I have now decided to stick around the university as a staff member, as an admissions counselor, in a role that really allows me to share with individuals like you all how Pitt is providing the best collegiate experience in the world to its students. During our time together this evening, I'm going to do just a light walkthrough of all that the university has to offer from both inside the classroom and then outside of the classroom. And then we will go ahead and we will wrap things up this evening with a walkthrough of our application process. Throughout the evening, I encourage you to submit any questions that you may have, and I will address all of those at the end, or I will get in touch with you within the next couple of days to follow up on those questions. But please do not hesitate to submit any questions you may have. There is no such thing as a silly question when going through this process, and I am here to help you. And once again, thank you for joining this evening. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. It does take just a, a quick moment for that to share, so I apologize if there's any type of delay, but we'll jump into the presentation in just a moment. All right, wonderful. Once again, thank you for tuning in this evening to learn a little bit more, a little bit more about the University of Pittsburgh. I'm not sure what maybe you already know about Pitt. Maybe you've already visited. Maybe you have had a family member who has attended the University of Pittsburgh. But the information that I'm going to share with you this evening is really just the ground level in hopes that following this presentation, you'll want to come back to us. You'll want to register for one of our other opportunities that we have for individuals to learn about Pitt. Um, you'll have to excuse me one second. My, my screen still seems to be loading. I'll try to stop sharing it and then share it one more time with you. This is whenever you know that things are truly happening live. All right, wonderful. It seems that we are finally underway. Uh, to kick us off though, I am going to brag a little bit about the university. Note that we currently have a 94% placement rate with our graduating students. What that means is that within six months of graduation, 94% of our students are successfully placed in either professional employment or graduate school opportunities. And those are going to be at some of the top companies and institutions around the globe. Places like Walt Disney, Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, UPMC, PNC, Dick Sporting Goods, American Eagle. And in terms of graduate schools, the University of Pittsburgh is obviously at the top of that list. However, our students are ending up at 
other incredible institutions as well, including Carnegie Mellon, which is just next door, Oxford, Harvard, Yale, NYU, Johns Hopkins, and both of those lists continue on and with prestige. However, how are we accomplishing this? How are we accomplishing that incredible 94% placement rate with our students? We're doing so through two avenues. The first avenue is going to be the many ways that students can be involved inside the classroom at the University of Pittsburgh. As you can see on the screen, whenever it comes to undergraduate academics, we have 10 schools for our students to study within. And whenever all 10 of those schools come together, it is hundreds of options for majors, minors, and certificates for our students to choose from. Now, as an incoming freshman student, five of those schools are going to be direct freshman entry, which means that whenever you are applying to Pitt, as opposed to applying to the university as a whole, you will instead be applying directly into one of those five freshman entry schools. Those schools, they're all listed on the screen right now. You'll see our Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, College of Business Administration, Swanson School of Engineering, our School of Computing and Information, and then lastly, our School of Nursing. I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into those schools in just a second, but again, whenever you are applying to the University of Pittsburgh, as opposed to applying to Pitt as a whole, you will instead be selecting from one of these five schools. So the first of those schools is going to be our Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences. The Dietrich School is the largest school at the undergraduate level with over 100 different options alone for majors, minors, and certificates for our students to choose from. This is really going to be the liberal arts focus of the university, housing all of our health sciences, social sciences, uh, humanities, foreign languages, mathematics. This is also going to be where any student entering into the university with an undecided major will at least start out. Something that I like to note about students that are entering into Pitt with an undecided major is that that is completely okay. Not knowing what you want to pursue at age 16, 17, 18 is completely all right. And during the time that you spend at Pitt, we will do everything in our power to help you to figure out what it is that you are passionate about pursuing. The next of those five freshman entry schools is going to be our College of Business Administration, also known as Pitt Business. Pitt Business houses seven different majors that break down into a variety of the different areas of business. So finance, accounting, human resources, supply chain management, and then a variety of others as well. In addition to these seven majors, they also offer a variety of certificates. Now, if you're not familiar with what a certificate is at the collegiate level, it is somewhat of a midpoint between a major and a minor. So it's going to be fewer credits than a major would be, more than a minor would be. However, the bigger difference is that it's going to be cross-disciplinary. So it's going to pull courses from multiple different areas of study to form one specified certificate in a certain focus area. These certificates act nicely on top of whatever major or majors you are already pursuing. So an example, say you are a marketing major within Pitt Business, but you know that you want to work within the sports industry, maybe within sports marketing. So you'll take on our sports, excuse me, our sports management certificate on top of your marketing degree so that you still have that heavy focus within marketing and have all of the great flexibility of that, but you also have a certificate in that specified focus within sports management really helps you to get your career running once you graduate, having that specified focus. But if you're not sure on kind of a specific area that you want to be in, you do not have to pursue one of those certificates. Certificates are something that are quite unique within our Pitt Business Program, but they are offered across all of our academic schools. The next of our freshman entry schools is going to be our Swanson School of Engineering. The Swanson School houses 10 different majors that break down into 10 of the different disciplines of engineering. So civil engineering, computer engineering, environmental engineering, and then a variety of others as well. And they are also offering those minors and certificates just like the Dietrich School and Pitt Business. Something that's unique about our engineering program is that students will spend the entirety of freshman year taking core courses in engineering before selecting any majors, minors, disciplines that they are going to pursue further. We like to offer it this way so that all of our engineering students have a well-developed background in all of the different areas of engineering before selecting which disciplines they are later going to pursue. The next of our freshman entry schools is our School of Computing and Information. And we are especially excited for this school because for the first time during the fall of 2019, we welcomed in our first freshman class into that school. 
Up until the fall of 2019, this was considered an upper level school, which meant that students had to wait typically until their junior year to begin pursuing the different programs that we have to offer within this school. However, the university noticed that the city of Pittsburgh is currently booming within the tech industry with representation from Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Duolingo, Uber, all of these incredible tech companies here in the city of Pittsburgh wanting to employ the young bright minds of our students. In order for us as a university to best prepare our students for those incredible opportunities with these incredible tech companies, they needed to begin within the School of Computing and Information as early as freshman year, which is why, as I noted, for the fall of 2019, we welcomed in our first freshman class into that school, and we look forward to seeing those programs grow in the coming years. And then lastly, of our five freshman entry schools is going to be our renowned School of Nursing. Our School of Nursing and all of the health sciences at the University of Pittsburgh are especially strong due to, our, due to our direct connection to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, UPMC. With that direct connection to UPMC, it allows us to have six teaching hospitals right on our campus for all of our health science students to utilize for uh, working as a tech, an intern, an aide, maybe doing some shadowing research. For our nursing students specifically, this comes into play with our clinical rotations. Because they have such close access to these hospitals, our nursing students will begin their clinical rotations during their sophomore year, which gives them three years of hands-on learning under their belt when they graduate from our four-year nursing program. So again, those are our five freshman entry schools. Whenever you are completing the application, you will be prompted to select which of these five schools you are applying into. And whenever we get to the application process at the end of this presentation, I will recap on this a little bit. In addition to being able to apply to one of those five schools that I just mentioned, you will also have the opportunity to apply to Pitt Honors. Now, something to note about Pitt Honors is that this is going to be a separate opportunity from those other academic opportunities you are already pursuing. So you will never be solely a Pitt Honors student, but instead you could be a Pitt Honors student and a Pitt Nursing student, or a Pitt Honors student and a Pitt Business student. Whatever it may be, with Pitt Honors, you are a part of a cohort of other students at the university. You'll have access to things like honors housing on campus, different honors courses, specialized advising specifically for that honors cohort, and then multiple different opportunities outside of the classroom that again are specifically designed for that Pitt Honors cohort. Whenever we get to the application process at the end, I'll talk a little bit more about how you'll be able to apply specifically to Pitt Honors. Now, as I mentioned at the start, whenever I was bragging a little bit, we have that 94% placement rate with our students and we are accomplishing that through those two different avenues. Avenue one was those academic opportunities that I just mentioned. Avenue two are going to be the many opportunities that students can take advantage of outside of the classroom. Whenever it comes to being involved outside of the classroom, a lot of that starts in the city of Pittsburgh. Whenever it comes to the university, we are located about three miles outside of what is considered downtown Pittsburgh. So we are still within the city, we are still within a very urban environment, but we are not directly within downtown, which allows us to still offer a traditional camaraderie-based college campus just with an urban flair. The location of the University of Pittsburgh is actually the number one reason why I chose to attend Pitt. I loved that it really offered the best of both worlds, that I had access to downtown, I had access to all of the great benefits of living in an urban environment, but I was still having access to a college campus. I had a part of the city that felt like my own as a Pitt student. I could walk around and I could tell, oh, that's an academic building or that's a residence hall, there's a dining facility in there, and all of these individuals that I'm walking amongst are my fellow students, staff of the university, faculty, but also members of the city of Pittsburgh. Again, it's a great mix, a great mix of the best of both worlds between urban and that traditional college campus. However, one of the coolest benefits of being a Pitt student is that all students receive fair free access to all of Pittsburgh's public transit. So that will include our bus system, our subway system, and the incline, which is somewhat of a novelty for the city. With that fare free access, you can very easily get into downtown, get to the Pittsburgh airport, or to any of the other neighborhoods that make up the city of Pittsburgh, which really allows for the city to become your campus. 
you can go downtown for an internship or to see a live arts performance. You can go to any of the other neighborhoods of Pittsburgh for trying out a new restaurant, going shopping, going to a sporting event, maybe doing some community service or some research, whatever it may be with that carefree access. Yes, your uh, home will be within Oakland, the neighborhood where our campus is located. However, the rest of the city will be your playground to explore. And there are many opportunities, as I can tell you, to take advantage of around the city. There are going to be just as many opportunities, though, to take advantage of right back on campus whenever it comes to student life. Maybe that's going to mean prepping for your first job by utilizing our Career Development Center. Our Career Development Center is regularly preparing students for a successful start to their career, whether that is with a resume review, cover letter review, sending you to a mock interview, a job fair, a shadowing opportunity, or setting you up with your first internship. They offer a program known as the Internship Guarantee. And with that program, students upon completion of a short checklist of career-related tasks are guaranteed an internship in their desired career field, whatever it may be. I had the opportunity to complete the Internship Guarantee knowing that I wanted to stay working within higher education. They were able to set me up with an incredible internship for two summers actually with Johns Hopkins University. I had an incredible experience. A friend of mine though, I think she had a slightly more unique experience. She was a marketing and communications major at Pitt and it just so happened that during the last semester of our senior year, she interned with the Pittsburgh Penguins. If you're not familiar with the Penguins, they are the professional hockey team here in the city and it just so happened that the semester that she was interning with them, they went on to win the Stanley Cup. So the whole time that she's interning with them, she got to travel with the team, be a part of all of those different celebrations. And upon completing her internship, not only was she offered a full-time job with the team, but she also walked away with a really incredible Stanley Cup championship ring. All the, I hope your jaw is on the floor right now. Mine was whenever I heard this story for the first time, um, but all because of these incredible opportunities outside of the classroom, all because of our Career Development Center and their internship guarantee program, she had a remarkable internship, uh, uh, now has a full-time job with the Pittsburgh Penguins and a really incredible piece of jewelry to commemorate it all. That is just one example of the many things that students can take advantage of outside of the classroom. Others will include being involved in Pitt Athletics. Pitt is a Division I school in the Atlantic Coast Conference. We have multiple sports teams competing at that level. And whether you are a student athlete or a student supporter, being, or excuse me, an athletic supporter, being a part of Pitt Athletics is always exciting and is a great way to express your Pitt pride on campus. You can take advantage of things like Pitt Arts, which allows students to have access to all of the different arts experiences that are happening around the city, whether that is a live performance, going to a museum and exhibit, whatever it may be. Students can study abroad. We offer over 350 study abroad programs that travel to over 70 different countries around the globe. Students can take advantage of any of our 700 plus student organizations. We have to imagine that you are currently involved in these opportunities in your hometown, in your high school, in your community, wherever it may be. And we hope that you'll want to continue those passions whenever you get to the University of Pittsburgh. Again, though, that was just route two of how we are accomplishing that incredible 94% placement rate with our students. So we first mentioned those remarkable academic opportunities, and now we just wrapped it up with those remarkable opportunities for students to take advantage of outside of the classroom. We're gonna go ahead and dive a little bit deeper now into that application and enrollment process. I just want to remind you, please feel free to take advantage of the Q&A box. I will be addressing all of the questions that are within there in just a few moments. And if there are any that I'm not able to get to this evening, I will follow up with you within the next few days. As we get into this application process and as we keep that Q&A box in mind, I just want to remind you that there is no such thing as a silly question as we go through this process. Whether you are the first person in your family to be going to college or the first person to be, to be applying to college in 20 years or so, again, there is no such thing as a silly question. I am here to help. I am happy to help. Everyone in our Office of Admissions is happy to help you with whatever you may need assistance with. I believe the most important thing to keep in mind whenever it comes to applying to Pitt is that we operate on rolling admission. What that means is that we don't have any hard deadlines for things like early action, early decision, or even a hard deadline on when our application will close. 
Instead, our application opens each year at the beginning of August. And at that time, we begin to accept applications, send out decisions, admit students, and enroll students for our next freshman class. And we continue to do all of those steps well into the spring months. Now, because we do start to uh, review applications so early in the process, admit students and enroll students for our next freshman class so early in the academic year, we always advise students to apply as early as possible. Applying as early as possible is not only going to give you the greatest chances of being admitted, but it will also give you the greatest chances of having access to things like merit scholarships and pit honors. The further you wait to apply in the academic year, the fewer seats we're going to have available that we can admit to and the tighter the criteria becomes to be admitted. So again, if you take any advice from this session this evening, it's going to be apply as early as possible. Whenever you are applying, we offer our application through three different forms. The first will be on the University of Pittsburgh admissions website, but then we are also going to be available on the Common App and the Coalition app as well. We do not have a preference on which application portal you use, so truly whichever is going to be the easiest for you is fine with us. Whenever it comes to applying, there are going to be four pieces that you're going to want to keep in mind. The first piece, that's going to be just your general application. This is where you share all of your background and contact information. Um, and you're also going to share in this portion of the application, which of those five freshman entry schools you are applying to. So again, either arts and sciences, pit business, engineering, school of computing and information, or pit nursing. On that first part of the application, that is where you will note which of those five freshman entry schools you are applying into. On that same part of the application, you'll be able to note if you would like to be reviewed for pit honors. It will just be a simple question. Would you like to be reviewed for pit honors? You'll check yes, you'll check no, and you'll move on from there. Very, very simple. There's going to be one additional step for, or, excuse me, in order to be reviewed for pit honors, but I'll talk about that in just a moment. The next piece of your application, that's going to be your academic record, which can be shared either through a high school transcript or something known as the self-reported academic record. In short, the SAR, S-R-A-R. You can submit either of these documents. We again do not have a preference, but this will be how you're sharing your high school performance with us. So that will mean all of the courses that you've taken, their level of difficulty, and the wonderful grades that you've received in all of them. I note level of difficulty because we love to see that our applicants are challenging themselves with a rigorous curriculum. This could mean AP courses, honors, advanced, IP, IB, dual enrollment, whatever that might mean for your school. We love to see that our applicants are challenging themselves. If you're not familiar with the self-reported record, this is going to be a document where you'll be able to share directly with the university all of that great high school academic info without having to have a high school transcript sent to us. This document will be built into the rest of the application and you'll be able to input all of that great info and then send it directly to us. We like to offer the self-reported record because we believe that it streamlines the process. You again don't have to worry about contacting your high school to have that document sent. There might be sometimes a lag then in how quickly we can get a decision back to you because we're waiting on your school, finally we receive the document, we can attach it to the rest of your application and review it with the materials that you maybe submitted weeks, if not a month ago. With the self-reported record, again, it will be built into the application. So when you click submit, you're sending all of the information that we need in order to review your application. Once again, we do not have a preference. Whichever is going to be the easiest for you is fine with us. The next piece of the application will be your standardized test scores. So either the SAT, the ACT, or both. Whenever it comes to standardized test scores, we do take the most competitive score possible for students. So that will either be the SAT, SAT super score or the highest ACT composite. Something to note about this year is that we are offering a flexible approach to the inclusion of standardized test scores for our academic schools. What that means is that if you are applying to either the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, Pitt Business, the Swanson School of Engineering, or the School of Computing and Information, you do have the option to apply test optional, which means that you would not be submitting any standardized test scores with your application. If you have those test scores and you would like to send them to us, you absolutely can and we will review those with your application. But if you do not have any test scores or you haven't had the chance yet to take those exams, you are able to apply to those four schools test optional. 
our Pitt School of Nursing is going to be a little bit different in that we are still requiring that applicants have a standardized test score, either SAT or ACT, when submitting a complete application to that school. The reason for that are there are two, three, there are two reasons actually. The first, that school is highly competitive. We typically only uh, have about 200 freshman students within each freshman class. The other uh, reason for that, we have research that shows a direct correlation between how students perform on that standardized test, so either the SAT or ACT, and then how they perform on the NCLEX exam, which is the exam that all of our nursing students take whenever they are graduating from our nursing program. So again, if you are applying to any of those other four schools, you can apply test optional, but for the Pitt School of Nursing, we will be looking for either an SAT or an ACT score for a complete application into that school. Of course, we are flexible with that policy and if things need to change, we will make those updates. But for now, we are still looking for um, one test score with a complete application there. And then the last piece of your application are going to be your responses to our short answer questions. In lieu of an official essay, anything like that, we offer sh four short answer prompts that you are welcome to complete to share a little bit more information about yourself. Anything that you haven't already been able to share with the review committee throughout the rest of the application process. There are going to be four responses that you can submit responses to. We'll really only be looking for you to submit two responses though. And we're looking for your responses to be about 250 to 300 words. If you're below, above, that is completely okay. Just a range for you to keep in mind. And again, this is going to be your space to highlight any of that additional information about yourself that you haven't already been able to share with the review committee. Maybe this is a specific reason why you want to come to Pitt or a specific passion that you are excited to bring with you. This is your space to be creative. This is your space to utilize to advocate for yourself. So definitely take advantage of it with some quality responses. Once you have submitted your application, it typically takes about four to six weeks for us to do a turnaround and get an admissions decision back to you. That, deadline, that window can fluctuate a little bit depending on the time of year that you are applying. Might take closer to that four week mark or a little bit less, might take closer to that six week mark, but we do try to cap it at no longer than six weeks. As I mentioned at the start, we don't have any hard deadlines for things like early action, early decision, anything like that. But you'll see noted on the screen, there are going to be a few deadlines in place for some of the uh, supplemental opportunities that I mentioned. So merit scholarships, pit honors, um, some of our guaranteed admission programs for graduate schools, those will have some hard deadlines for them. But if you're just applying for undergraduate admission, the application will stay open on a rolling basis uh, throughout the entirety of the academic year. One of the most important dates to keep in mind will be that May 1st deadline to commit to Pitt. May 1st is somewhat of a universal deadline for colleges and universities across the United States, prompting students to commit for the following year and the University of Pittsburgh will be following that date as well. Before you know it though, you will have submitted that application. You will have that decision letter in your hand. It will read, congratulations, you've been admitted to Pitt. At that point, we hope you run out the front door, hug your mailman who brought you your admissions letter, post it on social media, do whatever you need to do to express your excitement. We are excited with you. Next thing you know, you'll be on campus arriving for freshman orientation. You'll spend four incredible years at the university. And then before you know it, you'll be like myself, an alum of the University of Pittsburgh. Being able to say that I'm an alum of Pitt is one of the proudest things that I can say about myself. And I hope that someday I share that feeling with some of you. Thank you all so much again for tuning in this evening. I'm going to take, to take just a brief pause while my contact information is on the screen. Um, and then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll start taking a look at uh, some of those different questions that you have all submitted. So please feel free to take down my email. It is there, tsj16 at pit.edu. As you'll see on the screen, I am the admissions counselor for the university that manages a series of the Midwest states, including Missouri. Um, so it is a joy to be with you all this evening. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen now and open up that Q&A. I don't see any questions that have rolled in just yet, uh, but please feel free to stick those in there as you have them. I will stick around still for a couple more minutes. If there's anything even that you just maybe wanted to hear 
a little bit more about, I'm happy to address that, whatever you may need. Uh, you're also welcome to email me your questions if you have them. Wonderful. Well, I'm not seeing any questions coming in and that is completely okay. If you do realize that you have questions, again, my email is tsj16 at pitt.edu. Thank you very much for tuning in this evening. I'm thrilled that uh, there are individuals out there who have an interest in the University of Pittsburgh. I had an incredible experience at Pitt and I would love to see uh, many, many students have that experience as well. Uh, so Jenny, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Tim. That was great. Um, so I just have some closing remarks. I just wanted to share with you all. Um, again, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much again, Tim, for your time and for giving us a little bit more information about University of Pittsburgh. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you have to provide. Also, this was just one of the many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at moacac.org. And in about a week, you'll find the sessions recordings as well as all the other sessions recordings at again, moacac.org. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye.